Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about uh, the latest episode of Killing Eve. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This is the pin ultimate episode. So I think kind of a nice theme in this episode that's kind of specifically, uh, I feel like a line from Constantine. Basically, whatever you're going to do, don't do it alone. It's kind of a nice theme throughout this entire episode. Because, yeah, there's some pairings in some regards, like the whole Villanelle and Gun thing. But I feel like a lot of people are just kind of on their own dealing with the aftermath of just everything as we're heading towards the conclusion. And everyone's trying to figure out what their next move is going to be. Whether everything that's led them up to now has been worthwhile. Because Villanelle's kind of tossed everything aside. Granted, she's kind of been tossing everything aside since Season 3. But she's kind of putting the 12 behind her. She's staying with Gun Because I think... And I think it, it flows interestingly enough that this is just a continuation of what Villanelle does. Every time there's ever been a falling out with Eve. From Eve stabbing her to her thinking she killed Eve to uh, them going their separate ways uh, in between season three and four, that she always kind of ends up doing something else to kind of fill that void inside of her. Like when she thought she killed Eden, what'd she do? She went off and kind of rushed to get married. Um, oh, after season three, what'd she do? She went off and tried to become Christian. She's always trying to fill that hole in her heart and that void that Eve leaves to with some to some shape or form, and I feel like Gun just happened to be the latest replacement that um, at least attempt of a replacement. So they're off doing their thing. Uh, Gun seems a lot like Villanelle. She seems like an even crazier Villanelle, which you go, how is that possible? It just is. I think Gun is just because she's been off on her own for a while. Plus, she's. I mean, we've heard of villain. I think the most people, at least that I'm aware of, I don't know if that's ever... I feel like the most people Villanelle's ever killed at once was her family. Her mom, her, and her pseudo-stepdad, and his son, and his son's significant other. I think that's the most people she's killed at one time. Maybe I'm completely wrong in misremembering, but... Because she usually only kills, like, one or one person at a time, typically. So... But... Uh, we learned that gun, like her village in France or whatever, ended up getting, uh, was poisoned, uh, because apparently she poured three gallons of cyanide in the water supply. It's like, Jesus. I mean, I guess everyone has to start, I mean, I was about to say everyone's got to start somewhere, I guess, but I'm like, is that actually her start? I assume so, but regardless, um, I think Villanelle enjoyed the fact is that life with Gun was simple and easy, knowing that she she feels like, well, I thought me and Eve were a kindred spirit, but I don't know whether it's just a culmination of everything Eve did that already rubbed Villanelle the wrong way, or plus hearing the Helen and her thing probably like was kind of the last straw to some extent. Um, like you kind of push me away and don't acknowledge me and don't want me, but then you go off and hook up with Helen, especially knowing my beef with Helen. It's just kind of even more of a slap in the face, maybe. I just, it feels like the Helen, especially her expression, finding out there was something between Eve and Helen, it seemed like it, because that's what really kind of pushed her to finally, like, cut Helen's, like, Achilles heels, you know, so. But I think with, like, like I said, I believe with gun things were a lot simpler and she felt like no 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 this person's really my kindred spirit they have it all like the way helen she wanted helen dead too because she was like helen's a bitch and i'm like yeah i can agree with that and oh my god you got this entire island that's cool and i don't know it just because villanelle is so lost i think that's why she resonates so much with gun but i feel like beyond that and maybe, maybe that's just me i don't feel like there's any deeper connection there once again i think it's just uh filling the void as best as you can type of situation then you have carolyn's situation which she went to a spot where she believed that the 12th was going to meet because I, apparently there's a time and place where they you know the ultimate supervillains gather together which i'm wondering is there a specific reason why this specific time frame is when they meet like 
what is the thing that kind of ultimately ends up bringing them all together. But before, you know, well, Carolyn ends up finding out later on because of Vlad, because he actually inspired her, that she might be actually looking in the wrong place because Vlad came to get her because it's like, yeah, kind of fitting the theme I was bringing up before of kind of everyone's alone to some extent. And Carolyn definitely is. It's like, right, you betrayed the people you betrayed your own country for. You also betrayed your country. You have literally nothing and no one right now. It's like, well, you have your daughter, but I guess you kind of push her away and keeping your distance from her. They have their complicated relationship. You probably sent your daughter away. It's like, I'll go home. Leave me alone. Don't stay with me anymore. So that's probably all that would be chalked up to because we haven't seen Geraldine at all since last season. So, But maybe that's kind of all that got allocated to, but... Carolyn still needs to, I guess, considering everything, her connection to all of this, where this all kind of started for her years and years ago, it just feels befitting to end this that she has to, you know, and once again, how much of this is really about Kenny is or how much of it just you feeling like you have, you have to have something just like everyone else you are and villain like Villanelle isn't the only ones doing it everyone else is trying to fill some void inside of themselves and so it's like is that the main purpose behind everything because there's that like I said there was that line from Eve that Eve was like this has no this is uh, this is this isn't even about Kenny that once again that line could be interpreted as is Kenny really your motivation by what you're doing or just saying that this is bigger than just Kenny there's been so much that the 12 is responsible for maybe that's what that could be seen as but when that guy's getting taken away at the end of the episode, well, at the end of, like, Carolyn's section, and she's looking at him, I don't know whether it's a thing of, oh, maybe he actually was an innocent person that you're sending away because you think he actually did poison your drink, or maybe he was like, oh, my God, you caught me. I thought I was so slick. I don't know if he really was an assassin or not. The way he was talking to her, like, oh, like, when you're so remarkably close, at first I was like, is he, at first I was like, is that supposed to reference like you're the top dog that she's looking for, that you're so blatant and brazen that you're going to sit down in front of her? And then like three seconds later, Vlad walks up and I'm like, wait, is that, it's like, oh, it's not, I thought about to say, is it insinuating Vlad is the, and I was like, no, 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 seems like that's not the case, but it's just, I mean, maybe just the whole scene was also to be just a metaphor of once again, where is Caroline all alone yet again? She has to face this and do this alone. To be fair, jumping around a little bit, her and Eve are definitely going to end up crossing paths. Well, her, Eve, and potentially Villanelle will be crossing paths. So, Eve is trying to live her everyday life, trying to find what she's going to do now. Because uh, Yusef was able to like hack into Helen's phone, but it's like, right, Helen's dead. Lars uh, is dead as well. It's like, right, you did everything you set out to do, so you need to find your new normal. So he invites her out to sing karaoke, but partway through it, what does she see? She sees Elena, um, Bill, and his wife, and Nico, back when life was simple, because it is a thing of who she was before isn't who she can... She can't be that person anymore. And Because I think Yusef even said that the old life doesn't fit anymore. I don't know whether that's a culmination of supposed to be what her life was like before we got introduced to it in this scene. Because we never really got to know Eve outside of all of this. Because when we met Eve, she was already looking into the Villanelle thing. She kind of became obsessed. So we were there kind of the birth of that. So we never really got to know and see Eve really before everything. So I don't know whether it's a, oh, your old life before all this you can won't quite fit. Or is it just the life that you've been living for the past four seasons for these... The, the entirety of the show can't fit, you know, with, like, going forward, you know, but now she's wondering, like, what was the purpose of it all, like, was it all a mistake, you know, because it left her feeling empty, now that she's done all this, she's lost so much in the process, I mean, granted, Elena's not dead, they're just not around each other anymore, so it's just like, all these connections, everything she had is gone, um, Everything between her and Nico is up and smokes the way it is, and obviously Bill being long dead, but still, it hitting her that that's the person she used to be. Like, oh, I used to be married. I used to uh, go to karaoke, and she's even talking to Martin, trying to figure out where she go from here. Because despite everything, it's like, right, I saw someone, a woman bleed out, and I killed a guy. It's like. I wanted to kill him, so I did. And she's like, right. And uh, um, but no, like I think she said, despite the odds, I survived. And he's like, congratulations. And she's like, for what? What was the purpose of it all? 
And Martin's trying to tell her, you know, and this is also something Yusuf was saying that basically you have a choice of you can either you can let it go and just find some way forward because he references, right, I came back from a tour. There were seven of us. Now there are currently only three of us alive. You just have to find some way to move forward that at the end of the day, letting go and moving forward, trying to find a means of moving on no matter how hard it is is a choice to move on, but she's like, what if I don't want to move on? What if I don't want to let go? And he's like, then, you know, you have to decide that for yourself. And he's like, I can't, I thought I could help you, but I can't. Their relationship was always just kind of a means to an end to some extent. It's like they enjoyed each other's company, but it was always a thing of, let's not let this get too serious. But I think he was borderlining like, right, I like you and I want to be able to be there to help you throughout all of this, but I can't really do that for you. Whatever this part of your journey, you kind of have to take on your own. These are the choices you have to make. You have to find and discover the answers within yourself. So, and Martin referencing that there's a little bit of fun in life and you just kind of have to find it. Um, What are those things like whether it's wine, this or that. And... Ultimately, Eve couldn't let it go, so she gets that message on Helen's phone and goes to the one person who could give her answers, Constantine, who tells her about what it is, that the one person who could help her decipher it and understand it is go to Villanelle. It's like, she doesn't want anything to do with me. Do not go to, whatever you're going to do, Eve, don't go at it alone. Which... He's going through some stuff himself this episode because, lo and behold, I talked about her earlier in the season. We haven't heard anything about her since uh, she got put in that ment- uh, hospital. And, ooh, Irina calls up because apparently uh, Helen gave out one last middle finger before die. Well, actually, we find out two middle fingers before she died. So I was like, oh. And Irina's like, He's like, oh, let me find you. Let me take care of you. Everything I did was just to take care of you. She's like, right. If you weren't hanging around that shithead so much, maybe you could have. And she was like, Villanelle? He's like, yes, of course I'm talking about Villanelle. Because in her mind, it's like, you chose. To be fair, even he acknowledged time and time again, Irina's an asshole. Granted, she wouldn't have been the psychopathic asshole if it wasn't for him. If he had spent more time around her and... Despite everything, he does love Villanelle, and he does care about Villanelle, and ultimately, it's like that, the life he chose, the the path he chose, ended with his daughter now hating him. I was kind of, you know, jumping around a little bit. I was like, oh man, is Arena going to find you and kill you? Especially because she's like, right, if I'm going to like have your attention, maybe like joining the 12 will finally be that. He's like, let me find you. She's like, bro, you know that's not how the rules work, old man. So I guess... That's why he was also, he was already hesitant about Pam going through all this because the way things went down with Villanelle, he felt bad and he just didn't have it in his heart anymore to put someone else through that. Especially because Pam, it's like you have other avenues. This line of work is for people who have nothing and no one left, like Villanelle. But you, you have so many other prospects. You could live a happy, normal life. You, you like Helen whispered in your ears to make you feel like you were special. And for the first time in ever, someone saw that you were good at something, that you could do something. Someone like believed in you, and that's why you're doing this. You're you're not doing it because necessarily 100% like it though. So he sends her off to kind of enjoy herself. And part of me was wondering, like, are we going to find out the guy she's hanging out with at that festival slash fair? Is like, is she going to end up having to kill him? But she actually helps him out. And after his run-in with Eve, I think that sparked a lot in Constantine. He had already been thinking about it, but taking his own advice that Eve was like, right, don't go at any, what are you going to do? Don't go at it alone. So he contacts, um... He contact he tries to get Pam to come back with him. And I think it's because now knowing Helen is dead, the 12 might also have all the dirt she was going to, like, uh, blackmail him with, um, being the one who stole all the money. But we don't know, like, Helen probably, like, there's no way she told the rest of the 12, because if she did, he'd already be dead. They would have come after him. So that was her trump card she was sitting on, so she never played it, so they're unaware. With her dead, he has nothing to ever fear from her. Like, those secrets die with her, uh, so... 
he was trying to like, right, get away. He was going to take Pam with him because he talked about it. Every time he worked for someone, they've always come so close to killing him. And so he's like, I'm scared. And when I'm not like when I'm not, that's when I I'm should be scared. Like the fact is, I think it's almost, oh, when um, everything seems honky dory, that's when you should be worried the most when things could kind of go sideways, go super pear shaped. So the moment Pam hugged her. I was like, oh, God. I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to go down. I was like, is she going to poison him? Like, how is she going to do it? Nah, it's the freaking pizza cutter. That sucked. And he's like, right, Pam, you didn't have to do that. He's like, Helen, she's dead. It's like, wait, what? She's like, why didn't you tell me? And so the other bird. And I wonder how Arena's going to feel about that, knowing her dad's dead. They didn't have the best relationship, and she was already kind of cursing her dad a little bit. Just kind of hating him, but now he's gone. I'm curious to see what that means. He can't even be there to kind of save his daughter. He was probably hoping, like, get Pam out of this because he cares about her, that she can, like, live a normal, ordinary life, and then also potentially probably try to find his daughter to um, pull her out of this. But it's like, right, the choices I've made led me and so many other people to where we are right now. So he just kind of accepted it, and it's just like, you figured, I, they'd already foreshadowed it when Villanelle was like, right, because I just thought where things stood, Pam wouldn't have a reason to, but it's like, right, Helen had given her the orders to kill him, um, but Villanelle's words to him in episode six was, you got to be careful because you can't train people to kill without them. One of them is going to end up killing you. And it did end up being Villanelle and it ended up being Pam. But still, he was like, right. I uh, give this message to Carolyn. I always loved her. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. And she finishes him off so he doesn't suffer. So, Because she was thanking him because I think other than just Helen, the fact is that he was the only other... Helen believed in her, but she was always a means to an end. For her, Constantine, it's like, no, you actually cared for me. Um, you were always, because she's one of the few people that was actually genuinely nice to her, and she wasn't used to that in her life. So I think that's why it kind of hit her a little harder. Like, right, I wish I hadn't done that. But because if I'd known Helen was dead sooner, I wouldn't have done it. But, you know, there's nothing that can be do done and it's it's sad yet beautiful her leaving him in the bed like that it's like right you're a mortician you know how to spruce him up and make him look good so um once again just never know how things are gonna go um in the long run so at the same time that's all happening we have eve uh going to scotland because uh Constantine pointed her towards where um, Villanelle was, which Villanelle and Gunn, they uh, have sex. But then the moment she comes out, like the next morning or whatever, it's like, where's my, what happened to my boat? It's like, oh, I needed wood. It's like, no, you didn't. I was like, oh, that seems a little creepy. She kind of took away your one exit. It's like, where's my stuff? It's in there. You're going to be sleeping with me for now. And I'm like, oh, that seems like you, you, my, keep here. It feels like a very, like, stalkerish thing of like, yeah, you're, you're mine now. Yeah, I, I own you. You're, no, 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 you're not going to leave me. That seems like that kind of, like, fatal attraction type of vibes that I was getting from Gunn. And you could tell Villanelle didn't like it, too. Especially because she was fixing her something to drink and kept sniffing her hair. It's like, oh, yeah, it's good. And it's like, oh. Once again, Villanelle is weird, but I think it's like she's used, she's used to kind of being the... I guess for a metaphor, from a metaphorical sense, I guess more in a an emotional and I guess the alpha in the relationship or even the top in the relationship. And here's Gunn kind of treating her like sniffing her hair and stuff. I'm like, I mean, you kind of do the same thing to Eve, but I guess it's like, right, being on the receiving end is a little weird. I, I think it's just, once again, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to stay here. Uh, especially with you being under the thumb of the 12, I want nothing to do with that. It's like, right, this, you don't even recognize that this is a prison, but for her, it's like, this is what I like. All I have to do is what they ask me of, and I get to keep this to myself. It's like, yeah, but then I was like, I'm going to leave. It's like, no, you're not. So it's like, cool, you're going to have to catch me. And then poor Eve shows up at the quite literally the worst possible time. So it's like, cool. Eve gets chased down by gun. I'm sure, without having seen the next episode, Villanelle is going to end up saving her, most likely killing Gun. So, question is how that whole sequence is going to play out. We'll see. Um, 
the next episode, which these aired as back-to-back episodes. I'm just watching them one at a time just to kind of give one episode my entire focus rather than just kind of like doing all both episodes all at once. But yeah, the next episode is the series finale. Um, it's going to be wild to see how this all plays out. Who's going to make it? Um, even those who do make it, what their stories are going to end up like. Damn shows killing people off in like the, the second to third last episode or something like that. Because it makes me think of spoilers. Orphan Black, I'll go ahead and say it. I won't say who. Orphan Black killed a pretty major character. I want to say it was like in the second, maybe even third. To, it was like either episode eight or nine. I don't remember. It was like either the second to last or third to last episode of the series. They ended up killing off a pretty major character. I'm like, wow. I mean, it's like, yeah, because just because at the end doesn't, there ain't going to be no happy endings. So obviously Constantine kicked the bucket, but it's almost like, yeah, it was only a matter of time like your luck was going to run out. I mean, after everything, getting shot, even in the hand, which Eve did apologize for, but like every close encounter with death, you had the heart attack last season. It was only a matter of time like your luck was going to run out and it ultimately did. So whether we'll get anything with the whole arena thing. We'll have to wait and see the whole Pam and Carolyn thing, what that looks like. The probably like along with that. So if I wonder, will Pam kick it with Carolyn or will she just drop off the message to Carolyn, which Carolyn's probably going to, it's going to hurt for Carolyn because despite everything, you know, he accidentally killed Kenny and he might actually been Kenny's dad. There's that whole thing. So, but she did care about him. I mean, that's why she never killed him, even given an opportunity last in the season three finale. Why she ended up killing Paula instead of him? Because there was all, despite everything, it's like right. This is also the same dude that blackmailed your father into committing suicide too. So, it's like Jesus. Like, there's so much history there. But I think because of that, it just it complicates things in many different ways. So. We'll, we'll see what Carolyn d- does once we kind of have this meeting of the 12, finding out who's who, and once we get there, what the end result's going to be, who knows. It's going to be fascinating to see, like I said, where everyone's story ends up. Will there be a happily ever after for Eve and Villanelle? What does that look like? Uh, will it even be a happily ever after? Will it be a bar- I'm I'm almost thinking, we're going to get some Romeo and Juliet-esque elements to this? I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to fully expect from the series finale, but I'm excited to find out. Um, I'm going to be watching that next. Obviously, if you're listening to this, whenever this goes up, the series finale is already going to be going up with it. So, uh, do keep that in mind. But, uh, but uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.